Hey, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and we're still in Manhattan Reptile World today. I know you guys think it's a different day, but it's, it's really not. Uh, <laughs> sometimes we do multiple on the same day to keep ourselves sane. And the first thing you're going to notice, and there's probably already somebody typing a comment about it, and I'm going to make you look like a complete uh, low-level human being for doing that, is this snake looks like a pile of shit. It's extremely skinny. You can see its spine. You can see its body shape. You can see its condition. And we're not saying that this snake is the picture perfect or healthy. As a matter of fact, we're showing it because it's not. Um, so this snake came into our shop and it came into Colin. So I'm going to let him kind of talk about the condition and what he's going to need to do to fix this. And it was privately owned. And so go ahead and kind of fill us in on how, like, what you're going to have to do. And then we'll kind of talk about how it came here. So um, you want me to explain, like, how she came here kind of first? Well, or, we can do that. I mean, she like came why? here, like, basically the lady that had her just wasn't able to take care of her anymore, correct? Yeah. So the individual had this animal, she told me, for seven years. And for those who know anything about red tail boas or own them, um, this individual right here looks to be about the size of a two-year-old red tail boa at the most. And um, so when I saw it, I was immediately kind of taken aback, one by the size, two by the body condition of the animal. And she told me that she's owned it for the seven years. And the reason that they were getting rid of the animals because she didn't feel safe around it anymore because it would try to bite her when she would go to handle it. Now, my first reaction was probably not um, an aggressive response. It's actually just starving to death and doing everything that it can to not die from starvation. Because when I got this animal, it actually looked worse than it does now, believe it or not. Because I have fed this thing several times um, since then. So you can see on the bottom side, it looks like there's something in it. On the top side, you can't it looks like a triangle and when I first got it you could see every every individual rib you could see the spine very very clearly um, this animal was extremely emaciated when I first got it and so what was going on was it wasn't being aggressive it was just trying to eat anything that it could because it knew it was about to actually starve to death it had depleted its fat reserves entirely there was nothing inside of it it was going to die if it didn't do something now, this snake will likely make a full recovery in Colin's care here at the shop. But one thing I want to say, first of all, is I want to commend the lady. And you're like, what? But here's the thing. She decided to do something different and bring it to somebody who could take care of it. And that should be commended. Now, I wish it would have happened a little earlier, obviously. Um, but, you know, these animals are a life, too. And we owe it to them to take the best care of them we can. And if we're not able to provide that, we owe it to them to find a place that can. And you're probably saying, well, it was worse than this. It looks terrible, but it actually was. Like he said, you could see every rib. And we didn't want to go right away and put it on camera because, one, we needed to get it feeding first. We needed to make sure it was going to recover first. If we would have got it, and right as soon as we got it in a horrible condition, started to handle it, put it on camera, and done all this, we could have actually compounded the problem, right? Yeah, you could stress them out pretty easily in that condition. And we could have then caused its demise. We waited a while, got it eating, got it going well, you know, make sure it's going to be okay before we even film this video to kind of talk about this. Uh, yeah, and I can assure you guys that the, this animal will be okay. In mm -hmm. a month or two, it is going to eat several food items, and it's going to turn those food items into fat deposits, and its body is going to start changing shape. It's not going to look so vertical anymore like it does right now. It's going to look more round like a snake should. And boas, red tail boas, do kind of have a vertical body, but not so extreme like this where you can see the spine protruding from the muscle around it. Uh, right. That's not something you want to have happen. There's very few snakes you should see the spine on. It's mostly going to be arboreal things that stay thinner because they're not breaking tree branches. Mm -hmm. Granted, boas can spend a lot of times in trees, but they're a pretty heavy-bodied snake for that, actually. Not like some of your small tree vipers, which will have a little bit of that triangular shape. And one could argue gaboons, even though they're massive, have a triangular shape. But I've seen skinny gaboons, and you, you can obviously tell one that's emaciated. Uh, now, this animal, too... We might sell it at some point in time, but we're yep. not going to sell it in this condition. Yep, I'm going to keep it here until I know that it is perfectly healthy, and then eventually I will find it a good home. But as you can see, I'm holding it pretty openly, freely right now. It, it's not being aggressive in the slightest. Mm -hmm. it, it's a friendly snake. It's actually very calm for a red-tailed boa, which, to be honest with you, is probably because it doesn't have a whole lot of energy because it's still trying to build up those fat reserves again. But the good news with this animal is that it does have a food response still. It eats everything you put in front of it. It wants to survive. My biggest thing with ant reptiles specifically is when they stop eating, that's the biggest sign that they're almost 
done. Now, if an animal is still eating regularly, that means it has the want to survive. It wants to survive, and so it will. And um, this animal is in that condition still. It's not past the point that I call of no return when they stop eating and just don't care about food anymore, even though they are starving. Right. And so I guess the thing I want to impress on you guys is if you know somebody that has an animal in this situation, uh, impress upon them the importance of finding it a spot where it can be cared for. Or if you yourself find yourself ever in this situation with an animal, take it to somebody who can care for it. And don't be afraid to take one of these to care for it if you have the opportunity to do so. Now, I would not introduce this into your main collection when it first comes in because, you know, you're, we're assuming at first it's food. And obviously in this case, because it's already fattened up, it is food. But you do want to be careful taking something from the outside into your main collection just in case it was a disease going through here causing that. So you do want to do some quarantine, and that's why this has been separated. So we're not carrying our zoo or buyer bugs. Uh, we're going to both clean up afterwards. But we don't believe it to be anything other than food because it's eating. It's already putting on weight. Hell, it looks a lot better than it did. Uh, Kurt, anything you want to ask? No. All right, Colin, you want to add about this animal before we get off of here and mm -hmm. what the right thing to do is when you can't take care of something? Nope. All right. So, guys, that's all we have. Like I say, for that person who already commented, that animal looks terrible. There was a reason for it. We're fixing it. We didn't do it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.